Welcome back in this uh, conference room. Uh, thank you very much for being here. I hope you are not too tired after lunch. We will try to wake, wake you up. Um, this session is on cross-border collaborative media in, in, in Europe. Uh, collaboration in media is a big topic. It has been addressed uh, at least twice in, in different contexts this morning. Investigative journal journalism um, is, of course, something where um, media more and more are, are combining forces, but collaboration goes far beyond. Uh, and the question uh, here is to what extent it is, um, it is a, a winning model for media and what are the challenges that, that comes uh, with it when you work collaboratively. I mean, you could say um, media are competitors, so why should they collaborate? Um, it is exactly the question we would like to discuss a little bit with you guys. Uh, we have a panel here, but uh, you are also the experts, so be prepared that uh, it turns very uh, soon to you um, to have a, a discussion among all of us. Um, so, I'm Patrick Leusch, I'm Head European Affairs at Deutsche Welle. Deutsche Welle is the international broadcaster, you know that. Um, and head European Affairs means that I'm in charge of advocacy, lobbying and fundraising in the Director General's office. I'm not heading the European Language Department, which, which is done by Adelaide Feike, uh, which uh, covers the region with many languages, you know that. Um, but, but I'm in charge of uh, our international networking. And I'm at the same time Project Director of ENTER. Uh, we will explain a little bit later what ENTER is, because we also brought two uh, partners from our ENTER network, be because ENTER is one example how you can work collaboratively in Europe. Uh, and we also uh, brought another one uh, that is working collaboratively, uh, and that is Yadu, the Yadu magazine, which is represented by Teresa Sematomava. Thank you very much. Welcome on stage. Take a seat. A round of applause would be great. Thank you very much. Yes, very good. Okay, and without, without you knowing uh, more about ENTER, I present uh, to you Dominika Michalak. She is the uh, lead editor for our Polish edition, based in Warsaw, and journalist with ONET PL, which is uh, a leading uh, news media in uh, Poland. Okay, and last but not least, I welcome Reneta Vesilinova. She is the editor lead for our uh, Bulgarian program coming from Sofia and working with a private company that's called Dirbege. Sorry. Okay, um, you see here, um, yeah, it is, uh, Teresa is fr uh, from an organization that is on one hand the media, but on the other hand uh, also like NGO or, or, or sector? I'm not NGO. You're not NGO, you're media. Okay, so we have two representatives from private media of different character, and I'm from a public media. So the first thing to learn here is that y you can collaborate across different uh, media types and uh, it's part of the story how that works with different cultures in the different medias. That's also something we will assess. Um, before, before we start the debate about what can collaboration teach us and where are the limits of collaboration and what is your experience, we will take five minutes to uh, shortly let you a little bit know how the two different collaborative networks and projects that are present here are working, and I would like to ask Teresa to start with a very short introduction uh, on uh, what your do is doing. Yeah. Do you want me to sit or stand here? You can stand if you want, okay. or sit, or walk around. I prefer always to walk around. Uh, hello, so I will start with a really small presentation about Yadu. I start with a screenshot of our main page, uh, where you can see everything what is important about us. In the 
left upper corner, I hope it's left uh, because I'm uh, always disoriented. You see logo of Goethe Institute. So I said we are not NGO, we are a medium, but we are part of Goethe Institute. Goethe Institute, this house is our home institution, but we are independent journalists and we uh, nobody tells us in this house how should we do, what should we do, or what should we write about. So thank you, Goethe Institute, for having us. Uh, Yadu, you see the title of our medium. Maybe you don't know what it means. I also don't know what it means because I wasn't Good in start. <laughs> inventing that. I can just tell you that Ja means in Czech, me, and Du means in German. You or in Czech, I walk or I go. So maybe it means dialogue between whatever. You can use your imagination. And in the uh, right upper corner, you see various language versions. Czech, German, Slovakian, and Ukrainian. Uh, yes, we have articles in all these languages, but we see Czech and Slovak as understandable languages. I read Slovakian article and I understand it, and Slovaks read Czech article, they understand it. So that means in practice we don't uh, translate in both languages, always just in one of them. Uh, then you see our rubrics. I don't know if rubric is an English word, maybe Patrick. Uh, how is it? Columns. Columns, Columns. okay. Uh, you see Exile, it's also written in uh, Cyrillic. Uh, that was our special project after the, uh, after, uh, how to say it very correctly and diplomatically, uh, when 2021, the big thing in Ukraine happened. I know there was happening a lot of things earlier, you know what I mean? So we had a special project for uh, Ukrainian journalists and Ukrainian topics. Uh, then you see temata, that means uh, topic issues. So uh, now we work like uh, with uh, topic issues. We do normally four or five uh, thematic issues every year. Now you see we have a new topic. It's home, bittersweet home. It's an uh, issue about housing, housing crisis and how young people deal with housing crisis. There are reports about how can you uh, survive nowadays if you uh, don't have three houses because your grandmother died yesterday. Uh, sorry. Uh, then we have culture, society and enviro. These are normal columns about uh, uh, like regular, regular columns for several articles. And I will go further. So we were uh, launched in November 2011. I was not there. It was only German Czech version. Then 2020, we launched a Slovakian version. And we did a new website design thanks to our Goethe Insti Institute. Um, uh, how to say it? Uh, thanks to München, where they did it. And uh, in 2022, we launched the Ukrainian version. And see, since 2023, we are part of journalistic project perspectives. I will tell more later about this. And uh, in the history of Yadu, he, we won three journalistic prizes. Uh, one in Czech Republic and two in Slovakia, which is great for us and we are very happy about this because that means that we are not just a small something, uh, uh, many languages and weird, ar weird articles, but that we are like um, quite good. Uh, who are our partners in this uh, EU funded project called Perspectives? It's Hungarian uh, radio EPER, it's Capital from Slovakia, Polish Kultura Liberalna, Media for Change and Bendra, which are, fro which are from Latvia. Uh, another partner is Nara from Lithuania, and Czech partner is Revi Prostor. It's a cultural magazine. We are very happy to work with them. And uh, us. 
That's how our normal partner meeting looks like. Uh, you see Pat Patrick Hamos, it's our chef editor. Uh, he, he's a chef editor, but also he's responsible for German written articles. You see Daniel Riba, who uh, works with Slovakian art articles or articles written in Slovakian language. You see me, I often have to walk with a stroller because I have a small baby, so the others can sit uh, home. And uh, you see Romania Gorbach, which is our uh, Ukrainian editor based in Barcelona, so we really sit in different places. And here uh, some information. So what we try to do is constructive journalism, always solu solution-oriented. Uh, we know that we cannot cover what is breaking right now because we have to translate in many languages. So what we try to do is to do strengths from this. So we try to find things we can write about and they are maybe small but they can be big later and then somebody is very happy that we wrote about them and or they, that we wrote about it and they could read it. We are not afraid to have an opinion, so sometimes it sounds like we are part of Goethe Institute, but nobody tells us what opinion we have to do. We don't have to have the same opinion. Uh, we are slow, but we know this is our strengths, and we, uh, wor we work with four languages, but we believe in good translation and uh, we don't believe only in DeepL, so we always care about good translation and we uh, try always to um, show our translators which are very good, and that's all. Thank you very much. <laughs> that, that's not all, that's, that's just the start. To give a, a, a short impression uh, who you are and, 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 and how you work, but we will dig deeper in, into your workflows that is part of the practical aspects of collaboration because uh, the devil and the evil often is in the, in the details of uh, this kind of collaboration. Philosophy is, strategy is great. Maybe I ask uh, Dominica uh, shortly to uh, explain us how ONET is working, because ONET is, is somehow a collaborative working media group in Poland inside the Enter Consortium. So we broaden up the picture a little bit here. Yeah. Um. So hello everybody, I'm from ONET and I also represented Enter Poland. So ONET is a um, one of the main Polish websites uh, connected to news. Uh, we are publishing news. And, uh, and also we are like the partner of Enter. So uh, we as ONET, we are doing a lot of cross-border collaboration before Enter. Actually, we had like journalistic exchanges. We sent some journalists to Germany to actually Deutsche Welle in Bonn. We did, some, we did and we're still doing some translations and reprints of articles like this one from Die Welt. And also we are, have, we are having like day-to-day -day collaborations with other media. Uh, and th that's going to the end of my slides because I, I'm coming to enter. What we do as enter, while well, we hosted uh, this year actually TikTok uh, production days in Warsaw, organized with collaboration with Are We Europe uh, design sprint for our journalists, not only for Enter, but also for on the journalists, and worked like very recently with French journalists on ex episode of Growing Up format. And But we were going to tell you more about it like in a few minutes, I would say. So yeah. thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Maybe you can uh, launch the next uh, presentation and I take the opportunity to introduce Renetta and, and ask Renetta uh, with, with Dear Bege, which, which is the n somehow the newest partner on board of the Enter Network. Onet uh, is on board since two years. You, you launched in, in March, you came on board in, in, in March. Uh, 30 seconds, what is uh, Dear Bege in Bulgaria and what brought you on board? Why were your company interested in this collaboration? Well, 30 seconds is a bit challenging, but I'll promise to be quick uh, and be bold enough to break the status quo and go without presentation. So Dear BG is one of uh, Bulgaria's biggest news websites with a whole scope of news coverage. What I do there is um, 
I am I'm head of the video production and I'm also a journalist. And what brought us to take part in the Ender project is actually the fact that Bulgaria media environment it's, is not living its best years, uh, let's say. According to the latest report of the Reuters Institute for Study of Journalism, only 28% of the people in Bulgaria have whatsoever trust in the news outlets. Mm. And moreover, 64% of the Bulgarians use Facebook as their main source of information. But we all know we can find all kinds of craps in Facebook. And if people are, have, don't have critical minds enough, they can believe all kinds of crap on Facebook. So that was the main reason we decided to join. So you wanted to Enter. extend your journalism, which is running well on online. You wanted to, 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 to launch it more on the platforms where uh, youngsters are. Of course, yeah, that was one part. And the other part was um, Enter and especially the collaborative method of journalism is a very nice approach to gain the trust of people again. Mm. Thank you very much. Let's uh, again widen the picture before we enter in the, in the discussion. Um, so here is uh, what, what Enter is about. Uh, we developed a brand. Uh, Enter owns 24 different social media channels. Uh, when you check them uh, in the different languages, you always see the same logo. Uh, Enter means uh, come on board and it's referenced to digital because of the Enter button. Huh? That's the, the simple reason behind it. Um, it is a participatory forum making Europe tangible. That sounds big, but the idea is to, uh, to put journalism with a European perspective. We are not talking about Europe. We are not interviewing uh, representatives of European institutions. Uh, we are not uh, represented in, in Brussels. We do not news on Europe. We are not Euro news. Uh, we care about six or seven thematic pillars that are of proven interest of youngsters, ranging from relationship over climate, environment, uh, health, uh, economy, which means jobs, careers, and housing. Uh, and we always we, we, we treat that topics, but we give it a European perspective. We combine views from, 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 from Europe. Uh, we are exclusive on social media. We were born in social media, and the basic idea of the project was to have something that is entirely focused on, on social media. Um, and uh, the target group ranged from 18 to 34, which sounds large, but the idea was to target young Europeans in a phase of decision-making and heavy changes in their life. From 18 to 34, you turn from a uh, uh, a, a scholar to a student, you turn from a student to a professional, you turn from uh, a single to uh, somebody with a family, plenty of questions for your life. And Europe has, delivers a lot, particularly uh, to th these questions that, that are in, in front of you. But people don't care about it, don't know about it, and that's a pity. Um, we pay special attention uh, to what we call non-cosmopolite audiences. Non-cosmopolites are, in the definition of uh, the youth study of the EU, uh, young Europeans with few opportunities. That can, uh, that can be a variety uh, of, 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 of living conditions or economical and social conditions, but it's, it's for sure not two groups. One is the, the urban cosmopolite Erasmus um, bubble. We don't uh, seek for the attention of those who are convinced that Europe is a great opportunity and they move around for studying with Erasmus or without. Uh, that's not the group we are looking for. Um, Non-cosmopolites, on the other hand, are not uh, far-right idiots. That's the other point, right? Often these are people that won't make their, their, their life at home. They say, okay, it's great to spend uh, in, in, in Spain some vacations, but don't call on me to seek a job in, 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 in France. I want to have a job in, in Poznan or in wherever. And that, that leads more to a split between urban and rural. And, um, but there's a variety of, uh, of, of, of profiles you can touch on. And we pay much attention uh, to, to have these protagonists on the social media channels and to live, deliver for them. Um, we are eight partners in, 
different countries, Germany, Bulgaria, Portugal, Netherlands, Romania, Poland, and France, and we run these languages. The system is that each partner runs its own channels, right? But we have a very complex and complete workflow behind it, and we are in daily collaboration, and daily means really daily. Editors are sitting together daily. There is weekly three to four uh, co consultation rounds, and we have common platforms on which we store all the, the contents, we can share ideas, we, we, can, uh, we, we can display work, we can dispatch work. That's the consortium, under the lead of Deutsche Welle and France Media Mort, the French broadcaster, and, and the two of us brings the technical capacity, the marketing capacity, the audience research capacity in the in, in the project, but we, all, we only run one language. Huh? The German Lucas, uh, who had the design thinking workshop this morning, is heading the German and English team at Deutsche Welle. Uh, but the other partners are doing their own languages. So that's, that's where we are. Um, German, French, English, Portuguese, Romanian, Polish, Dutch, Bulgarian, Hungarian, uh, soon to start in 2024, in January probably. We have Slovak, um, and Italian and Spanish is, is still a plan. But it means that uh, we try to get uh, really a pan-European network. Uh, our scope is really to, to be uh, as uh, in inclusive as possible. Uh, we, have, um, we have 24 social media channels. Most of them are you know, Romanian and Portuguese and uh, French, etc. We have one common channel, which is TikTok. We work on TikTok all together. There is a protagonist from every, uh, there's a face from every single country for TikTok, a TikTok host. But in, on TikTok, we work together on, uh, in English. But all the other channels, we do not translation, we do adaptation, and we work together in developing formats that can vary between the different language editions, but have a common approach. You know? um, we create 9,000 contents per year. We have around about 160,000 followers by end of October. We have around about 9 million clicks on all contents per month. Uh, and we have a very high interaction rate compared to other channels that we see from competitors, but also internally of Deutsche Welle, for instance. The interaction rate of enter channels is very high. And that is very good because it's about debate. And when you look at the comments and the, uh, the community management, uh, so then you see there's a lot to find. We value differences and we celebrate commonalities. That, that's, that's our leading you know, ph philosophy somehow. Um, and uh, we, are, we try to find a common angle, but it doesn't mean that the, the contents come the same way in its Portuguese version and its Romanian version and its Bulgarian version. The, the contents can be very different, but the approach is often the same. Uh, and we try to be easy and, and universal, uh, but we put a lot of uh, efforts in, in the development of the contents together with all the teams. We don't pay attention to the fact if the teams are then designing the content to their audiences similar to others. So the difference is on the contents, but the similarities is in the formats, in the approach, in the thematic scope, uh, and in the way to approach uh, audiences. Uh, and we have a lot of cross-border formats where different teams contribute. Polls, uh, testimonies, uh, joint stories. Uh, we have uh, TikTok production days where we produce a lot of stories at once where four or five of the team members are together and, and produce. So what you can see is that the structure behind is the collaborative one, not the content. The content is individual, but the structure coming to good content, that is the collaboration aspect of it. So, okay, that, that was a short rundown to, um, to, 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 to enter, to complete a little bit uh, the, uh, the picture. Um, give me a hand. Who of you is in one or in another form involved in a collaborative project? Collaborative means that your institution is collaborating with another institution for the sake of a specific product or a series or whatever. Give me your hand. So it's, it's a third, more or less. Who of those who are collaborating with other entities are collaborating with more than one or two other entities? You see my point? 
wider networks or collaboration on an individual basis. Can you tell how, how many collaborators you have? Yeah, in the specific project we are five. You are five. Okay, in different, lang in the, in different countries? You want to know which? Yes. <laughs> uh, Georgia, Latvia, uh, Czech Republic, Poland, and uh, partly Hungary. And you're doing uh, journalistic content? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You showed up. What, what is your network about? Well, actually, I have to tell uh, you all that I'm working for foundations and not for media, and it's the core business of foundations. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> no. no, it's the core business uh, for us to rely on strong partners, so this is why. Are you working in a, a journalistic network? Uh, I wouldn't call it a journalistic network, but like in Slovakia, we have a loose network of actors who are helping each other. And in Garolata, we are just supporting like maybe 20 other organizations across Europe. So there's a lot of collaboration going on. Okay, and in what field? Uh, information security. So tackling disinformation, monitoring information. Oh, interesting. Tell me more. Information security. <laughs> Can you disclose something, or can you not disclose something? <laughs> I did present a lot on the panel, but if anyone's interested in knowing more, then uh, okay. I can put you some uh, interesting data and, and analysis, but okay. I, I don't Thank think we have to. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, the, to, to put it in an, in an overarching question, do you think that digital development, we all are ahead of a kind of digital development, right? Everything turns digital to bigger platforms, more tech-driven. Do you think that collaboration comes uh, necessarily with digitalization? Is digitalization asking for more collaborative approach? Who thinks yes? Hands up. Put your hands higher so I can see that. Who thinks no? Who is unsure? Yeah, okay, that's it. <laughs> okay, I, I personally believe that uh, digitalization drives collaboration for, for a couple of reasons. And I turn again to my panel to, to see in which ways that is true for, for, for media. We have uh, seen a little bit more for uh, foundations and, and, and the tech uh, uh, branch, but uh, it, it, we are discussing about media here. Um, what was when you when you st I mean you have an experience with Yadu uh, with this bipolar uh, magazine somehow and then you stepped up now freshly to a much broader network. What was the basic challenge you you met when you started discussing with the others? You mean when we when we started perspectives? Yes, um, because I imagine that it 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 stepped up your collaboration from a kind of you know, a duo uh, to, to a broader world. So I imagine that some challenges came with it. Yes, uh, but we were facing these challenges all, already before because you said we are bipolar, but we are kind of four polar. So yeah, okay. um, for us, this collaboration principle was uh, somehow natural because we, uh, with every article we are thinking, okay, will it interest people reading German written articles? Will it interest, will it interest, will it, you know? So this question was there always. And now we ask this question in a frame, uh, is a Czech reader interested in uh, Latvian farmers? Yeah. Is he, why not, you know? So Is he? Yes, I think he, should be. You know that? <laughs> you, he should be. Okay. I oh, think that, uh, he, he should have a possibility to read about Latvian farmers. Okay. But that, that, that is a definition from, from the editors. My reader should know about. Point, point, point. No, no. I don't say what he should know about. I say he could have possibility to read about this. Yeah. Um, how are you finding uh, Dominica or Renetta? I mean, you 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 are working. Uh, they never met. Uh, we needed the, the 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 Prague Media point to make them meet, but uh, they they work together since months online uh, every Weekly. every single Weekly. week, That's right? True. So applause to the Prague Media point and thanks to the German Czech Future Fund who is co-funding this panel. So Marek, uh, I did the job, okay? And uh, a round of applause if you agree, okay? <laughs> so. 
great format, by the way. Um, how are you going to, and I, as a project director, I am not in the machine room, right, of, of the work of Lucas and Domenica and Renetta and others. I don't know what they are discussing uh, day by day. I'm in charge of fundraising. So how are you going to find out what the readers or the, the, the users uh, are, are looking for when you discuss on the Monday morning uh, the topic uh, ahead? How are you going to do that? Well, I think for us it's a bit easier because actually Enter, it's not a news media channel. We're not announcing news. We are a journalistic media platform, though, that takes the news, take the, takes the hot topics, and works with them to spark a debate among the young people. Um, and having the opportunity to talk to our colleagues in Poland, in Portugal, in France, in Berlin, uh, at the same time, that makes the process uh, very exciting, actually. But you may find out that journalist. on a Monday morning, the priorities and what's on stake when you look at you know, uh, 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 like uh, a story clash or so, when you look what is in the bubbles in the different countries, you may find that there is a big variety and there is no common topic. So what then at 10 in the morning on Monday, when you find out that between Romania, France, uh, Scandinavia and Portugal, nothing is common? Well, that is a possibility, but we are still a joint common European society. And when we have an interesting topic happening in, in France, let's say, uh, you could always work with the information, work with the, the news, and use your colleagues' expertise to present that topic in a way that it becomes interesting for the audience in Bulgaria. What would happen if the same thing that happened in France happens here? So what, what you mean is you, you don't necessarily need, need a, a common topic from Portugal to Sofia. What you need is if you find some, something that is interesting for one of the partners, you then reflect on how others can contribute and give an added value. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. exactly. And, and that, you can that's jump the beauty in, in collaboration, anything. actually. Yeah, that's exactly what we are doing, and we are also like collaborating not only like all of the partners, but some bilateral collaboration are also going on. So, if, for example, if Poland and Germany are interested in the same topic, but not Bulgaria or Romania, we are like set up uh, meetings between uh, our journalists from Poland and from Germany, and they are discussing it bilaterally. So, yeah, so it's the many different kind of collaboration going on at the same time, actually. Yeah. How, how is your editorial workflow with your partners? How are you going to organize that? Uh, uh, I don't know how to... <laughs> so, uh, we have this... Uh, our editor's team and we have this um, project editor's team. Mm -hmm. So, that's... Uh, these are... Like different, uh, different I don't groups. Know. Yeah, uh, kind I, I, of a, yeah. a different coordination scheme. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. But that's that's just what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between the two workflows that you have? Because I imagine that one is relatively new. Eh? The project started technically in March, but you yeah. started then later on publishing contents. Mm. Um, so, what is the difference in 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 the working? Well, there, there is also a project team of the project, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not really involved because I, uh, uh, like, my responsibility are actually good text written in Czech. So you have to somehow dig deeper in these all structures of these all teams, and in the end, you have a good text. And sometimes it's, uh, let's say. Uh, also republishing of uh, someone else text in the project or it can be collaboration in the sense of uh, that some partner gives me some respondent for a specific opinion or problem with, which we write about in a, in a different article. Right, so it gives you more opportunities, more insights, more knowledge and yeah. also more distribution channels. Uh, in case it fits uh, for the respective topic at that yeah, or very moment. For example, what we did right now is uh, I showed you this screenshot of mm -hmm. our main page and we had um, a topic issue 
housing, oriented on housing crisis. So we did a big survey and every par partner gave us um, opinions of experts uh, what could uh, solve housing crisis. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we were like, oh, uh, I was like against this <laughs> because I was like, everybody will say the same. And actually they say uh, quite the same, but, but in different same, words. Same, but different. Yeah. Like it's, it's, in, it's uh, they uh, maybe pr prioritize differently or they, uh, they think differently, but actually everybody says the same. Thank you very much, Teresa. Because this is this is I, I think this is two very very great takeaways. What, one is uh, you don't need to know exactly what is the specific profit of a network from the beginning. Somehow you have an idea of if if I bring together some people, it might pay back to me, and that's what you are describing. You take opportunities in in in, in the network. Um, and, and the second thing is, when, when you start discussing things a little bit deeper, then you find out that there is interesting nu nuances, even with, with those topics where, at, at first glance, you see, oh, it's all similar, it's boring. That isn't true. But you have to dig a little bit deeper to find the differences, and then it starts to be creative. Yeah, and I also wanted to say that, uh, like uh, I said, we have these uh, partners from Hungary, da 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 da, da and we are part of Get Institute. But uh, for example, in this survey, these opinions about housing crisis were given by experts who are experts for Czech housing crisis, but they were, were not Czech, for example, because they right. are people who already uh, wrote yeah. uh, in English, you know, yeah, and yeah. I was so happy that it's already, you can really yeah. find so globalized yeah. uh, expert team. Yeah. The, the difference to Enter is maybe that Enter was designed from the beginning as a collaborative pan-European project. So no, no, nobody that entered the project had similar experience before. Because we built in Enter, we aimed for building really young teams and new teams, uh, and and not TV journalists that are partly doing kind of you know social media. We aimed really for uh, building teams. We have very young teams. Huh? The team lead, uh, Lucas, team lead uh, is is 29, and he was a former VJ in the team, and he was a former former developer in the team. And a, a short anecdote: our TikToker. Our TikToker. I, I got a request for a mission for a shooting with our TikToker in May from Lucas. And then uh, they changed date for our TikToker. And I said to Lucas, oh, why isn't that production happening that week? Uh, we need a kind of, you know, content for TikTok. And he said, oh, uh, it's not possible. Uh, Farhat, he has exams for uh, his abitur. I said, what? Are you telling me that the guy is still going to school and he has an exam and that's why we are, we are late with the TikTok production? And Lucas said, yes, that's exactly what's the case. So, very interesting. Uh, so it means we have a very young team. But, um, the, and, and it was a challenge at the beginning, I can tell you. Um, now, from, from your perspective, Domenica, when um, you have had different roles also in the, in, in, in the project since, um, uh, w w what is the, the, the biggest um, part of the collaboration? W w what is the part that, that is most work intensive? What would you say? Well, I would say like, the, the, like finding the topic that works for all of us actually, because we are, we are starting with, the, with that question, how we can identify the topic that is good, that is also pan-European, and then we can all like work on it. And for us, it was it would it was strange because some topics are good for our Polish audience and not that uh, interesting for for German or French audience. Also, some formats like Vox Pops are very popular in Poland, but they are not good uh, like in, in German markets. So uh, for for me, that is the hardest part. And I, I don't know if I can also answer what is the easiest part. Like easiest part are where we are meeting in the same room, not online, in, in the same places, like design sprints, like TikTok production days, because we are doing a lot in two or three days. We have a lot of good content that I that I have a lot of use like later on. 
and that that is the 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 best part of it but the most challenging is identifying the same like topics that can work everywhere and also like online meetings because we love to 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 spend time together but it's a lot of online meetings like every single day yeah and so far enter has a let's say restrictive uh, travel policy so a lot is done uh, via, via the digital platforms uh, but uh, it, it's it's also sometimes necessary to 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 meet that's true so turning to you again is everything what is said here on 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 the panel is that matching something you experience in your work have you something to add to that or say oh no for me it's completely different i mean uh, i don't know how in it i can say it's it's like this i have another experience so what is your experience what are your questions or those who have showed up that are in the collaborative work or have experience with collaborative work? So what, is that matching your experiences? Uh, shall we go on with the film or? <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. So, um I'm representing Depo Radio at uh, Teresa Mansion. We are the part of this perspective project. Yeah. And our experience is uh, connected this whole topic as a small community radio uh, connected to a university. Um, just to work together with, uh, with independent journalists and uh, in an in a international level, finding the common ground, finding uh, that entrance uh, points uh, connected to the topics, and I think it's the hardest part for us. <clears throat> is the is the content the the, the one and only uh, level of collaboration that that you have to find uh, a common content that you can co-create or share, or where you can profit from a content that has created another one? I think we have to uh, think about this uh, connected to this. Uh, in two levels, uh, for our, what can we produce, uh, what kind of interesting things to, uh, can we produce to our audience, that special one, and, uh, and of course this kind of common uh, points. For example, the, the, the housing topic, uh, there are different kind of things a bit in Hungary and also in, in Czech Republic and Poland, because we have great partners in Poland, Lithuania and Slovakia too. So the balance is also critical many times. And of course, from the human side, uh, for, I mean, on our side, we are, more, we are working mostly with uh, university students and they need more mentoring and training and the field of view. Okay. And this kind of field of view is also critical. The field of? Field of view. Um, how can you, uh, as a university student, work with, with independent and, oh, okay. and international colleagues and, for example, how you write an article, ethic, uh, ethics and, and stuff? Yeah, so training and so on. Okay, thank you very much. Hand over the micro to the, to the lady. For can me. I? Because yeah. I'm also from Perspectives. Uh, I'm from Cultura. Wow, you are more than us. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who is yeah. not from Perspective? <laughs> Show up your hands, please. <laughs> uh, I'm from Kultura Liberalna in Poland, and yeah, we're a part of Perspectives. And, and what I see as the main difference between what you're describing Enter to be and what Perspectives is, is exactly what you were kind of alluding to. That yes, the collaboration within Perspectives is happening mostly on the level of like cr finding common topics and, and common content rather than working on a common format. So that's something that we're not really focusing on. Everyone is working within the fo formats that they know and they feel comfortable in. And what we're trying to do is build a kind of a, a coalition around topics that we find uh, the most important and the most attractive to young people. And by adding to the, to the discussion around these topics, we're, we're trying to build like a Central Eastern European coalition that yeah. that's strengthening yeah, yeah what we believe in and and, and the values that yeah. our organizations are working on yeah great yeah thanks uh, Graham uh, Lucas and yeah. I, will, I, I will maybe ask a little bit a provocative question and the question is uh, what are your annual budgets 
and where the budget is coming, coming from. And I'm asking, because I have a lot of experience with uh, collaborative programs, and of the two types. One type is uh, basically grant-driven, big grant, one big organization's got a big grant, and is a top-down, in a certain way, developing a cooperation. And usually these corporations are producing the products which are, in a certain way, very sexy, they look like, it's a very good for the presentation, they don't really get the audience, and in a moment when the grant is out, the projects die out. And there are other corporations which are developed uh, naturally mm -hmm. by the players who are you know, yeah. doing their work, and then define the common things which bring them together in a usually ad hoc, informal cooperation which lasts, and then they fade away. So my question is, what are your budgets? and where they are coming from, and how you will react on this challenge, which I'm asking. Yes, thanks. Um, are, are you working in a, you are from a private media and working in, 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 uh, in collaboration with other media, correct? I'm, I'm currently from the, from the grand scheme of organization, which is the Society Center, which is... Ah, okay, yeah, okay. Media, yeah. But I'm also doing many other things. Yeah, okay, okay, Graham. Well, I, I, that question of the how to set it up for success when it's an arranged marriage versus uh, otherwise is a really, really interesting. I want to hear more about that. I wanted to share one of the challenges I see. Um, maybe there's a German word for this, Patrick, because you have better words. But it's, it's almost a, like challenge attunity. You know, there's a, there, with all of the, every time I have a, these collaborations with clients or something I've started, um, one of the things is this sort of honeymoon period at the beginning, where the first meetings, everybody is excited about the possibilities. And so I can give you one example, which is from the before, before, before times. But we, start, we launched a radio program with big players, BBC, New York Times, WNYC, Public Radio International, radio International and um, one other. Um, and the meetings at the beginning, especially with the funders, was such excitement that everybody got in the same room and you'd have conversations about what this show would become. And then after doing the first couple of pilots, I realized everybody was trying to be so agreeable that they imagined something different. And because I couldn't read thought bubbles above their head as the person charged with making the darn thing, uh, it was such a problem when we hit uh, when we hit that moment where it was difficult because everybody had been so friendly. We didn't learn how to sit in disagreement with one another, and so that meant every problem took forever to fix. And I think each partner wished that they were just doing it by themselves at that moment. So it really limited. It lowered the ceiling, mm -hmm. and so I wonder what you're experiencing, uh, these moments where there is a disagreement and you know you're going to still remain partners, so you can work through that disagreement together and create something productive and good. Yeah, okay. Great. Last intervention so far, and then we can come back, I think. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to... Uh, Go a little bit back to what Renata said earlier. Um, completely different direction, but I found it very interesting um, because we, we all work on the same project. But you mentioned um, the topic of trust being enhanced through collaboration, um, trust in media, which I found very interesting because I would say that the situations, um, for example, in Germany and Bulgaria are pretty different um, when it comes to trust in media, even though in, even in Germany, the trust in media is uh, decreasing over the last few years, but still, and uh, maybe you could go a little bit deeper into, into that topic of yeah, how cross-border pan-European collaboration can enhance the trust in media. Okay. To answer directly your question, yes, it's true uh, that uh, for ENTER, uh, it's a budget of uh, 4 million for 18 months with uh, nine organizations and the 24 channels and uh, everything I presented before. That sounds big, but if, if you look at uh, the eight or nine countries in which we work, it's not that much. And the, the, the purpose of the project is not only to create these contents, but to make media collaborate, collaborate and to enable media to faster provide 
good journalism via social media. That's a clear uh, aspect of it. So uh, all our partners are cer searchers. They're on, on the way, right? They, they are on the way to swift or, or build capacities to, uh, to, to put journalism in formats that youngsters today are, are consuming. And that is a very big challenge. Uh, so it's a development project. Uh, and personally, I must say, um, yes, we are struggling also with the period when this funding is over. We have a perspective till end of 26, I guess. But the, qu the real question is, what, what do we then? And to be honest, um, it, is a, it is a journalistic product in a, in a public service idea. I, I don't see any business model to make run this kind of contents on these platforms with, you know, without uh, having a public funding. Because uh, what we do is, the, I mean, the, uh, one big problem of Europe is that media markets are national, mainly. Uh, and European policy is foreign policy and not internal policy. Uh, and it is very costly to, to, to make sure that you have not only your weekly correspondent fish and article sent by your Brussels correspondent, but having a real European look at things. That's costly. And um, you are right. Uh, this project is publicly funded. And um, I don't, um, if you have an idea of a commercial perspective for such kind of operation, give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, but there were other questions. The, the conflict one, huh? the, so the, the, the conflict one, what, 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 what if? So can you tell us more about that? Yeah, of course. Um, sure, it's a bit tricky because we are in a virtual newsroom and planning meetings with uh, different nationalities and each one has its own cultural specifics. Like if you enter a Bulgarian newsroom, you'll most certainly see people shouting, papers flying around. Uh, but then, uh, let's say, the French guys, they're a lot more well-behaved and they have this uh, East tone of speaking. So, yeah, we, we all behave ourselves, but we all, I think, Dominica will say if she agrees or not, we all feel free to express our disagreements and we often enter discussions whether or not the topic X is relevant or not relevant, and uh, I think so far it's working. And you are also a group of very, very young journalists who are also very passionate about their stories, but it's also it could be like the, um, the source of the conflict, but also at the same time, uh, they knew that they want to produce something together, and because they are young, they are not so stubborn, I would say. That's why it's, like, it's very easy to work. But uh, to, to put on that question, um, I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, one, I, I don't know about you, but uh, from my perspective, one, one thing that makes it a little bit, on one hand, easier to collaborate in media, and on the other hand, difficult, and that relates to the point, digging deeper, that you mentioned earlier, is that we're talking here about journalism that ends up on the same platform from Lisbon to, to Moscow. I mean... The, the language of the of the platforms is 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 the is the same. You have to, you know, we are not discussing now how to how to play the platforms and how to overcome the the rules of the platforms. That's an, that's another debate. But don't you think it it makes it easier to collaborate when you understand that your audience and your audience behavior is on on larger and common platforms? And is video, is collaboration on video not easier than when you write articles, for instance, where you have much more differences in language and, and, and style and all that? Don't you think so? No. <laughs> A microphone for Teresa. <laughs> I will skip this video article debate um, <laughs> because I believe in uh, deep reading and perspectives and translations and these uh, things. But I will speak about this. Can I? Uh, 
it was interesting for me this uh, this um, term of uh, arranged marriage and honeymoon in the face of uh, when the project starts. We we I think we had it quite differently in our, in our project and also in our editor's room. Uh, I don't know if we ever had honeymoons. Uh, we have more like. <laughs> constructive uh, conversations and yes maybe sometimes we are all all too nice but i think you know this zoom reality people sit there and they'll they may be more smile than than not but is it so bad i mean would it be great that we would be shouting and arguing just to argue because we can i mean uh yes yeah, sometimes i'm wondering why are we all so nice to each other, but uh, I always see there are, uh, these are possibilities. And uh, for me, once I was, uh, I was participating on such a small collaborative project where we, where we were four people from four countries writing to each other what's happening in these countries. And for me, it was a big thing, but, but I was wondering if, you know, people read it, if the others read it. And, but still it was arranged marriage, but for me it was great marriage, sorry. <laughs> and I don't want to be here uh, telling you, uh, arrange your marriages, it will happen somehow. No, I just think like, uh, uh, like to work with different languages and different cultures really need some frame and it sounds greatly but if you do it just like uh, uh, without this frame then often it doesn't happen. Yeah, that means in you turn know? that true collaboration is hard work. Yeah, so for and me, constant work, and it takes it's, time, and it's, it's for yeah. I see that that these arrangements are sometimes a bit um, arranged, but good people can also say, "Hey, this is too arranged. Let's let's adapt it so it's not so uh, you know plastic or how to say." Yeah, it. Sorry, right. my English. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, you wanted to say something, Dominika? Yeah, I ag totally ag I agree with you, uh, Teresa, because we have the same experience. For us, it's arranged marriage, but it's a very good marriage. And also, we, uh, we all have in mind that our project is pretty unique, because I've never... I am a journalist for several years already, and I've never worked in something like this, when I have like constant uh, collaboration with people from all over the Europe with a different perspective, it's completely unique that any other experience, uh, journalistic experience you, ha you could have, really. So, yeah. Thanks. Yes. A new hand. Great. Thank you. I'm Andy. Uh, I'm a master's student, um, Erasmus Mundus Journalism. Uh, my question uh, is kind of building on what Teresa and Dominica just mentioned. So. Uh, because to me, like the, the idea of collaboration is more of like journalists giving uh, giving a lot of our energies to each other, right? But then, of course, the collaboration is also, I'd say, one thing that we can uh, something that we can take in from other journalists. And Teresa, I think, mentioned something about that. Uh, I'm just wondering, like, what is the biggest takeaway, and like, how is this experience? Uh, improved your uh, ways of doing journalism. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that was my last question, <laughs> by the way. Very good, the 10 minutes to the end. Um, yes, maybe I, I, we, we, we let them answer. What I can see is that when we talk about collaboration in, in journalism, um, yes, there is a lot of um, initiatives at the moment to make uh, media more collaborate particularly in the, in, in the European context. There's also a lot of funding. Huh? There are funds for collaborative journalism, cross-border journalism, investigative cross-border journalism, and so on. I, I personally think that uh, this strengthening of the media sector is, 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 is very important at, at the moment, because um, the, 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 this, this driving away uh, or the, this polarized world needs need, need somehow uh, to, to strengthen common ground, but that, that doesn't mean that you have to agree on everything. 
but uh, that you lose not contact and stay in bubbles. That, that's the idea behind. And personally, I, I, I think that's, that's very Im, Im, Im important in the European uh, context. When you look at uh, collaboration, you can, you can put it on, to my extent, on at least three levels, and maybe you have more. One is you can co-create or you can collaborate on contents. That is one example that we had here. Huh? You, you can try to collaborate on distribution. Uh, and, and one thing that is maybe not so in the focus, but which is very important for ENTER, you can collaborate uh, interdisciplinarily. So it means that uh, more and more in journalism, you have to collaborate with other professions to make your, your, your to get your pro, your product uh, to, to to the customer, be that research from audience research, uh, be that channel managers, for instance, uh, be that uh, developers, uh, IT wizards, security. Uh, I mean, uh, when you run these channels, you have to make sure that. Uh, these channels are not stolen, and uh, your passwords are, are safe, which is not always the case. Even we had to shut down the channel because it was hijacked once. Um, so there's a variety of, 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 of levels where you can collaborate, and the interdisciplinary thing is, is in, in my view, the, 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 the most important, because more and more journalism turns to be an interdisciplinary endeavor. You cannot say, I, I write an article and then it's fine, somebody will print it, or will publish it on a, on a website. The technical understanding is, is, is very important, I guess. Do you agree to that? You left the answer. No, okay, go ahead. Uh, you mentioned one thing when you were discussing um, the purpose of uh, ENTR, like regarding that it wasn't uh, to report news, but it was, it was to spark debate. Um, I mean, you obviously showed that it, it has somewhat of a reach with uh, millions of clicks and followers, but how, in, how do you accurately measure whether or not it is in fact sparking debate on, among young Europeans. I mean, it's one thing to show like the reach in terms of media, but it's another thing to actually showcase how this is uh, ena enabling discussions among young, young Europeans. Okay. Um, yeah. Lucas? I mean, yes, I would say um, the crucial part of the way that we work um, at ENTER is to really focus on um, our community by putting a, a very high focus on community management and tracking our community. So, of course, um, anything that goes beyond what's happening on our platforms is really hard to be measured. But what we can do is really, um, yeah, kind of like track what's happening on our own channels. And, um, yeah, we see that um, the more or the better we get with um, making engaging content, the higher the interaction is. And the more interesting the discussion underneath our contents are uh, or become. Uh, so that's, I mean, I think that is for us maybe the most important um, kind of like currency when it comes to the way that we work. Like, is what we're publishing sparking a debate on our channels um, and hopefully then beyond that as well? That's reflected also in, in simple things like budgets. Uh, at the beginning of the project two years ago, we had maybe two shifts of content creation and one shift of community management and then combined, you know, looking at Insta and, uh, or YouTube and looking at, at Facebook. In the meanwhile, we are on a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's nearly one content produced is one community management sh shift. And if, in some contents, you see that the real realistic work is done in the comments because the community manager then is adding more information because people ask something or they doubt about something, and then facts are, are brought up in, 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 the, in, in the debate. That's very interesting to see. When you see the, the sheer real or the, the initial post, you see, boy, that's bad journalism. Huh? That's very poor. It's simply 30 seconds about something, but then you, you, you check underneath and you see that there's much more information to that 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 is added and that also was a was was a was a learner huh? somehow okay so what was the, what is the main takeaway uh, the question came here what is for you guys the main takeaway from from this collaboration well for me personally i have to also quickly answer to lucas's question because it has relevance uh, about the the connection between cross-border media collaboration and trust in media. Because in our own particular case in Bulgaria, 
like Bulgarian media had a um, long-lasting relationship with different political and corporate influences throughout the years, which has led to the decrease of trust in people and in media. And the opportunity that we have to collaborate within the ENTER project, because collaboration has many faces. I, we can collaborate on data research, on gathering data, like, for example, me as a Bulgarian journalist, if I'm interested in a Polish topic, what I could do is Google the topic and find some resources in English, maybe in German if I uh, understand it somewhat, but within Enter I could call Dominika and I can ask her for really detailed research of information and then I could be much more a professional journalist to my own audience in Bulgaria, providing them um, a job well done. Uh, which, in time, it doesn't happen uh, immediately, but in time, leads to an increase in trust. And we're seeing it right now, actually, because we're taking part in ENTER for, this is our sixth month. And now we are seeing that Dear Beguet's audience, between 18 and 24 people of age, is getting higher. And those people are reaching Dear Beguet throughout ENTER platforms, th throughout the content that they first seen on social media then they're visiting our website. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, that is a huge impact, huge. Thanks. Dominika? What well, Donata said, it's also relevant for us, but for me, like personally also, uh, the most important take, take from, from uh, being a part of Enter, it's this that we are all became more creative because we have to like learn how to like produce content that that lasts 30 seconds and it's informative and it's entertaining at the same time with collaboration with other partners that's why we are beca like became more creative and we are also becoming more creative every single day that's like as i said it's completely unique in that way so yeah um i am I encourage myself somehow now more to work with some, somehow marginalized groups. For example, now we have um, a topic issue about mental health, mind matters. So I ask a person who just spent uh, her time uh, in, uh, in the hospital with uh, her mental health issues uh, or we I once had a homeless person writing me articles about uh, how he perceives the city mm. uh, so uh, it's a lot of editorial work like it's quite uh, it takes time but um, you get totally different perspectives than from someone who didn't uh, experience so much and who was just googling <laughs> Thank you very much. Final words by Teresa from Yadu magazine and the Perspective Project. And thank you to Renetta and thank you to Dominica and to all of you for your insights. Yes. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy the articles on, uh, on the website in your respective language and uh, check out your language channel on Enter. Pick up a pop socket for your phone here or one of our nice bags and then uh, become a follower. Uh, usually uh, after this kind of things we have uh, 50 to 100 more followers. I would see that uh, uh, Lucas is already checking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck uh, for, for your project.